This video will focus on crop management and pest control. We will delve into some of the basic pests and talk a small bit about some basic diseases that happen in some of our annual fruit and vegetable crops. Historically, we have used pesticides and herbicides as a means to get rid of pests and weeds that we have in our annual fruit and vegetable production systems. However, these chemicals have caused a trajectory of problems for us, two of which include super pests and super weeds. Both are evolved and mutated versions of pests and weeds that are resistant to these synthetic applications. Therefore, in non-chemical systems, we have to work extraordinarily hard to control different pests and weeds. Some techniques and practices that are used with organic permaculture or different types of non-chemical agriculture involve imitations of natural systems, some including using beneficial insects, creating habitats for natural enemies, plant placement for weed control, and weed suppression through different techniques like sheet mulching. Some of the very common pests in an organic or non-chemical annual fruit and vegetable system are the tomato hornworm, the cabbage worm, white flies, aphids, and thrips. And the tomato hornworm is specifically for the Solanaceae family and mostly is going to be attacking your tomato plants. The cabbage worm spans from a variety of different brassica vegetables. And those range from your broccoli, cauliflower, kale, to cabbage. White fly aphids and thrips are less discriminatory and they are often attacking leafy greens. They can also attack your root vegetables and uh, oftentimes even attack some of your cucurbits. This here is an example of what what a white cabbage worm looks like and you will see in the next slide the damage that the white cabbage worm can do. As you can see the cabbage worm has decimated uh, all of the outer leaves of this cabbage plant. In general many of our annual fruit and vegetable crops need to be protected past the point of a first or second stage of maturity. Typically if we can get them to a level of maturity that is past their 20 to 30 day mark they can be safe from a lot of different pests. However this isn't the case with all of our annual fruit and vegetable crops. Therefore we need to implement a variety of different practices to keep pests from damaging the crops as badly as this one is. One method of controlling your pests is to use a non-synthetic pesticide. There are a variety of different types of non-synthetic pesticides. And I will go through a few examples and we will cover even more in our lecture. Another example of a way to control them is to use biological pest control. Biological pest control is a term for any sort of method that imitates a natural version of pest control within whatever environment you are in. So for example, there are beneficial carnivorous insects that will eat the pests that are damaging your crops. You can introduce those into a system and that is a way to try to control your pests. Other examples of that are parasitoid insects that will uh, act as a parasite and kill whatever pest it is you are trying to eliminate. The last example of biological pest control is habitat manipulation. So habitat manipulation is changing your habitat to increase natural enemies of your pests. The next thing that you can do is use some sort of deterrent. Oftentimes these are flowers, other vegetables, or some sort of spray that you create that will deter your pests. And lastly, you can use a physical barrier, such as floating row cover or cheesecloth, 
to act as a mesh barrier in between your vegetable and fruit crop and that pest. A few basic examples of non-synthetic pesticides that are used oftentimes in non-chemical systems are diatomaceous earth, white clay, soap, and garlic water. All of these are natural examples of ways to keep away pests. Diatomaceous earth is typically used on slugs or different types of worms that could potentially be damaging your crops but are uh, basically within the soil at some level. White clay is often used for protection against cucumber beetles. Soap can be used for a variety of different insects. Oftentimes it is used for thrips or aphids and garlic water is used for those as well. One way to keep all of our crops from having different pest and disease problems is to maintain them. These are a few examples of ways to maintain crops in order to keep them healthy and keep them disease free. Some examples are thinning out crops. This you can see oftentimes with crops like beets or carrots and spinach. Pricking back or pinching back is another way to keep crops with high yield and low disease. Trellising and supporting vining crops like cucumbers, squash, or tomatoes can also help with circulation and moisture levels in order to keep them from getting any sort of disease that is easily contractible from those different levels. Another way to manage our crops is to use some field methods that we may already use in order to design our systems efficiently. Some of these are using companion planting, planting guilds with fruit trees, shade planning, and beneficial insect plant relationships. All of these can help lower the risk of getting disease or pest problems with all of your annual fruit and vegetable production. Throughout our next few lectures, we will talk about integrated pest management and some disease monitoring strategies in order to keep your crops as healthy and as disease and pest free as possible.